For trichomes.com, I'm Jesse Batend, and this is The High Ground. On this show, we feature leaders of the cannabis industry. We talk to everyone from farmers to CEOs and public officials, anyone making an impact on the cannabis community and beyond. There's no doubt that cannabis businesses in many states being deemed essential services helped mitigate some of the worst potential impacts of the coronavirus pandemic. But that doesn't mean that businesses, especially retail locations and dispensaries, aren't facing some serious challenges. While all companies have had to come up with new ways to safely get product to their customers, some are doing it in particularly fun and creative ways. Sean Cradle is the CEO of Pineapple Inc., which is definitely one of those companies. From setting up cool events like drive-in movie theaters to converting an old ice cream truck into a mobile dispensary, Sean and his team have come up with some really fun ways to keep doing business safely. So I decided to call Sean up to find out what they've done so far and how to plan for an uncertain future. Sean, uh, thank you so much for joining me. It is great to be here. Thanks a lot, Jesse. Your company has made some very strategic choices in reaction to some of the things that we've all been living through. And I want to talk to you about those choices. But you know, this show is really about leadership in the cannabis industry and getting to know the people behind those choices. So I wanted to kind of start there. And you moved from the Marine Corps into corporate affairs. Why, why that transition? What drew you uh, into, into that line of work? Um, well, you know, in terms of the, um, you know, the Marine Corps and when I served, uh, you know, I, I actually was a recruiter during, uh, there on, on the day of nine 11, the infamous day of nine 11. Wow. And, um, well, suffice to say that the, the, you know, the kid didn't, didn't join, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I was certainly, uh, it was a life changing day for myself. And, um, and I actually, it's, it's funny you, we, we, we are having this conversation now because this is, you know, this is more or less veteran season, you know, after nine 11 and it gets mm-hmm. into next month and veterans day and Marine Corps birthday. Um, it's a very trying time in retrospective and, and nostalgic time, good or bad mm-hmm. for a lot of us that have served, uh, especially during that campaign. And, um, I think that honestly, I had no, um, I had, I had no real reason to get into corporate. I actually went into entrepreneurship after the Marine Corps, I ended up uh, opening a fitness business. You know, our, our Marine Corps motto is Semper Fi, uh, Semper Fidelis, uh, always faithful uh, or Semper Fi uh, for short. So I, I, I opened Semper Fi Fitness uh, based out of Miami, wh- where I lived, uh, currently live for 11 years uh, before moving to LA to uh, assume the position to take over um, and, and run Pineapple Express and Pineapple Inc. Hmm. So I had no, I had no, um, I had no really rhyme or reason for getting back into corporate. I mean, I had a short stint at uh, United Health Group. Um, so I was, an, I was a corporate analyst uh, there. I used to supply the CEO of that company, uh, with, which is the largest healthcare provider in the nation, um, with all executive dashboards and things that he would make business decisions upon. So I started getting the, the itch, perhaps, uh, post-Marine Corps, uh, when I really dived into data and analytics. Um, hmm. I was a... I, I love doing that. I loved, uh, I'm very introverted uh, despite my position. Um, huh. and so I liked being, uh, I worked from home and I liked just crunching numbers all day. So I ended up finding a lot of issues, um, that were not found before. I, I look at data sets in a different way where things kind of jump out at me. And I was able to save the company a couple million dollars, uh, long story short on, on an issue. And that actually allowed me to lobby for myself to be at home full time. And that, and I'm from Connecticut originally, so this is where I was working at the time, and that allowed me to um, to work at home. And then I then I it allowed me to move, and to which I knew eventually I was going to get out of corporate and open my fitness business. And I figured, you know, Miami Beach specifically was the best place mm-hmm. to do it. I had never been to Miami. I didn't know anyone. I didn't have a place to live. I just showed up um, with all of my furniture. And I found the place and um, I'm, I'm good like that with my back against the wall. And uh, and I made it happen. Um, and in seven years, uh, I had a thriving uh, uh, fitness business. And also I did real estate and I also became a college professor at Barry University teaching leadership and entrepreneurship. Uh, so organizational structure and things of that nature started creeping in. So I, I went ahead and uh, acquired uh, actually four master's degrees out of Miami 
And uh, the first one being an exchange student finishing in Nuremberg, Germany um, for business management. Uh, I went on to my second master's and I got uh, business uh, intelligence and analytics because that's what I did for United Health Group. And also uh, analytics is what I did in the Marine Corps. I also graduated first class in military school uh, when, I, when I was in the Marine Corps. So I'm a big nerd. That's no, that's no, that's no, uh, that's no, that's no this secret to anybody that knows me. <laughs> this is not what I expected you to say after I graduated from the Marine Corps and I'm a big nerd. <laughs> yeah, right. It doesn't, it doesn't really fit. I mean, I can, I can say it, you know, we're not the, you know, the Air Force is usually the brains, but, um, but no, believe me, uh, we, we, Marines are very, very smart. Um, and we're, you know, we, we kind of hide that by our, our toughness and our, our dog like mentality, but <laughs> to get things done. But uh, I tell you what, um, it takes a lot of mental strength and, uh, you know, to get these things done in the manner of which no other branch could do other than the Marine Corps. So that's why we guard the president. Right. Um, hmm. so in the embassies around the world, so the, um, so I, I you know, I, I got the second master's and then I went on to get a, uh, uh, an additional tech master's in um, privacy and cybersecurity. And my last master's, I kind of capped off rounding out, you know, pretty much everything in uh, global organizational and um, uh, leadership. So um, basically, you know, corporate governance and how to run companies. So along with teaching it, for four years at the at the collegiate level, along with getting that master's, along with shadowing almost a uh, CEO of a publicly traded company, largest healthcare provider in the country, I really started having an itch more for um, getting back into corporate at the higher level. Um, you know, I didn't have a plan necessarily to do it. I just, in my mind internally, I thought if it happened, uh, I would like to do it at a public level uh, and before I was 40. Um, and truth be told, I got a knock or a tap on my shoulder from way over in L.A., uh, tapped long <laughs> into Miami. Um, a friend that I knew for some years who was uh, revamping Pineapple and needed someone to actually take it over and run it the way it's supposed to be run from an organizational and structural uh, standpoint because you know that's something that's very very lacking in the cannabis uh industry is a lot of lack of either uh straight up business experience honestly um let alone uh education formal education at, at a higher level as well not to mention multiple uh degrees and, and to cap it off uh you know i had that cachet of being a veteran and not only that a marine corps veteran so he saw this as an all-encompassing um you know person to actually come in and, and, and more or less re, re-engage Pineapple and its, its assets uh, to, to, its, to its prominence. Um, and so, which I, I was happily accepted uh, because I turned 40 in January. So I, I, almost two years ago in December coming up, I will have accepted that role. And we've done, um, you know, I didn't personally, um, you know, I didn't even try cannabis. Uh, until uh, maybe I was 22, 23, um, hmm. and maybe only uh, maybe about four times, five max, probably in my 20s alone. Uh, so it wasn't something that, you know, a lot of people probably look at now and think I'm, uh, I did, I'm just rolling around in this stuff, but um, I'm very naive when it comes to cannabis use per se. Um, I'm more at the, uh, you know, at the corporate level and making, and I, you know, for me, this, this could be a, we're selling toilet paper or any other product. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, look at this industry and this company as if it was any other. Uh, so, you know, for me, uh, and that's not my job, you know, it's not my job to try the product and all these things. And, uh, you know, it, it's, that's, you know, that's a lower levels. And, and that's also at my level in terms of uh, even, you know, marketing and, and uh, operations and things of that nature. So uh, for me, running the company, dealing with the shareholders, because we are public, uh, dealing with the investors, uh, getting eyes on us, uh, doing more public speaking engagements, and getting people to understand that, you know, Pineapple Inc. overall is, is an investment company, um, and it's also a publicly traded entity. Um, these, these subsidiaries, Pineapple Express, uh, THC, and Pineapple Wellness, are different divisions of that, and it's run straight up and down, like any other corporation, uh, especially as long as I'm on watch. And it took some time to clean those things up. Uh, but we know we've, 
we've done that and and we're we're moving forward and we're expanding now and um and that's one of the reasons why uh you guys have reached out and we're sitting here by the way trek yeah. is a is a is another you know we share a common ground here because you know we had we have the uh you know, we own the trademark uh, THC. You guys have trichomes and also the dot coms, you know, as well. Hmm. So that's that's very nice. That's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and uh, th- thank you for for going into that. I I, I want to kind of like go through some of it um, bit by bit a little bit and and touch on something that you said back towards the beginning. Um, clearly, that you're in a very different place right now than you were back then. But uh, I wonder just in a very, any way that you would interpret this question, are there any parallels that you see between the moment that we're living through right now and, and kind of just the cultural, social, political place that we found ourselves, you know, around 9-11? And I understand that there's a big difference between, you know, a global pandemic and a war, um, but but it's certainly unrest, and you're right. There yeah. are some, there are some common grounds and synergies there. Let me just preface this by you know I'm I'm a mixed uh, I like to say a hybrid, mm. uh, and you know I'm 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 mixed all around. Um, I'm actually uh, you know Puerto Rican. I'm 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 African American, and a little bit of Caucasian mixed in there somewhere down the line, which is where the cradle <laughs> comes from. But um, and you know and I grew up I I grew up with a single black mom in uh in connecticut in the 80s so um Hmm. there was a lot of things that i did i did see um fortunately for me personally um you know a small beach town of west haven connecticut mostly uh you know a big italian and greek uh, population and and of course we had a small um, black and brown community um i was fortunate enough to not necessarily experience so much uh, direct racism. I've seen it. Uh, but for me, I played football at, at a, you know, at a, as, as my friend, as a freshman and, and, uh, started, you know, at the, at the higher level. So I, I kind of had a little bit of a cachet with me. Um, I, I think that has something to do with it perhaps. Um, hmm. I, I like to think my personality did too. <laughs> but I was the only person that looked like me in the ski club. Um, but, <laughs> but, but, um, but, uh, you know, I think that, especially with what's happening now. And I can and personally, this has affected me. Um, I would say more than I've ever been touched by, I guess, overall racism in this country. And, you know, I've seen the riots and things like that, but it's something to where I, I, I honestly, Je- uh, Jesse, it, it crushed mm-hmm. me. It killed my heart um, because mm-hmm. especially speaking of George Floyd, this actually happened on Memorial Day. Um, oh. and from my perspective, from a veteran's perspective, from someone who I believe I'm on borrowed time, I believe I should have a couple of instances where I should not be here. Um, I could have easily been someone that's being, you know, uh, remembered on that day. And this is this, that, that was a day to reflect and remember those who have gave the ultimate sacrifice so that we can live our quote unquote American way of life. Well, that ain't it. Right. Uh, this happened literally on this day, and it was just a disgrace to everyone who has perished in any war and any type of uh, foreign affair that we've we've encountered. Um, and so mm. that that hit me like a ton of bricks uh, to where I felt the need to put out a corporate statement. Um, and this is something that honestly, you know, this is very standard for any corporation to put out something that that's. You know, it's such a it's such a, a, a you can't ignore what happened and you can't cover it up for, uh, you know, it's, this is a part of this is part of education. Uh, this is a corporate social responsibility. Um, you know, you can't mm. sit there and just continue to conduct business as if nothing's going on. Um, that's something that the cannabis industry lacks a lot because a lot of the folks in the cannabis industry um, don't have that that background enough to actually put that out. Instead, what I saw was sales <laughs> uh, because mm-hmm. of COVID, you know, and sales because, of, hey, you know, I've actually I've actually seen um, text messages come across from, you know, campaigns and marketing campaigns from other other places that said, um, you know, uh, we're, we're going to 
get your order in before the curfew starts, meaning for the riots. And I'm like, that's wow. just so tasteless and so out of touch. Um, we had no sales. Let me tell you right now, I said, we're not putting any deals together or nothing like that. We're not going to try to, uh, you know, capitalize on, on what's going on. Instead, we're going to put out a, a message because also this helps not only externally uh, for folks that, you know, um, want to know what we're, what we're thinking about, but also internally. Um, you know, I have a, I employ a very diverse group of people. Um, from everyone from the executive team to middle management down to the drivers uh, and, and, and customer service uh, representatives. These, these people are all different, just like me. And I could have easily been some, someone that was targeted, um, you know, because of my skin color and, or, or, or anything else. And um, so I, I put these statements out not only for the public to understand uh, where we stand on this, also, so my internal employees know where their company stands and they know that they're, they're, they're working for, uh, you know, I want to touch base on some of the things that questions that they may have. Well, how does my company feel about COVID? How does my company feel about civil unrest and, and social injustice? Uh, well, here you go. You know, you don't have to ask those questions. And, and my employees actually, you know, very, they, they thanked me a lot for it. And I didn't know honestly, that even drivers were reading these messages, <laughs> you know? uh, and, and they, and they, they actually expressed that um, it, it, it gave them some comfort that they're working for a progressive organization. That's exactly what I was going for. Also, one of my core values, my last core value is courage to be an industry leader. And that's something that I want any company that's out there right now or any emerging cannabis company to look at us as a benchmark for what running a cannabis company in this country should be. Because it's a bona fide industry, but the only way that the powers that be, meaning the feds and any of the like, who are, who are adhering to these negative stigmas, it's the only way they're gonna validate us and, and, and actually you know, make us a bona fide industry is if we actually conduct ourselves as such. And putting those messages hmm. out there is doing one of those things. You know? Two follow-up questions on that, if I may. Um... The first one is you talked a little bit about how you reacted to the news of the murder of George Floyd, but how did you manage um, responding with the company? I mean, you, you talked about these other companies that were putting out like, hey, we'll get you your <laughs> deal before the riots. You guys are in California uh, and there were protests, not riots. Uh, there, there were protests that that were occurring there. Um I mean, as a delivery company, what were the decisions and choices that you had to make coming out of, of that situation? Right. So immediately, I, you know, like I said, I put, the, I put the corporate message out externally and so my folks can hear it internally. And then we put a message out to our, our clients, you know, having them, you know, the, the customers or the consumers rather, I wanted them to know that, you know, we're still in business. However, please be patient as, you know, we may need to either reschedule deliveries just to be uh, compliant with uh, COVID protocols and also the, um, the curfews that were levied upon us. Um, so I, I, I could tell you one day when this all, uh, especially when um, I think it was the height of the protests, uh, when it started getting a little bit, you know, physical and they had the National Guard and everything like that, um, I, they, there was a, these, you know, these text messages that would go out and, uh, you know, tell you that you have to be home at a certain time is a curfew for LA County. And, uh, I remember there was one where it was about, uh, it was about 5 30 PM. Uh, we deliver until 10 PM. So it was about 5 30 PM. Uh, this came out and it said, uh, it said, uh, eight o'clock. Okay. Was the curfew. So we put messages out to our consumers saying that, We'd have to reschedule, you know, if, if it, you know, if it applied to them. Uh, and, and I wanted to get the drivers back uh, an hour prior so they can actually get back to base, change over and get home well before the curfew started. So they wouldn't have any issues either. Um, you know, it's not about making the margins. It's about safety, you know, and trying to operate or navigate smart. And, and this is something, again, that, you know, in the Marine Corps, we had a job to do. We couldn't get out of the job, but there were certain ways in which you adapt and overcome in order to do what you have to do. And I'm not going to put any, any of my drivers at risk. You know, all of my employees, anyone under me is my troop is considered my troop. Hmm. So I take that very seriously. And, and I don't, you know, 
I shut down the corporate office, first of all, because we can do Zooms. There's no need to, we're going to mitigate risks, you know, uh, with that. And the drivers and the facilities, the only thing that we had to really, really um, couldn't really get out of in terms of operating, but we, we did it at a very relaxed schedule. And uh, that one day that they put out, it was going to be uh, 8 p.m. So I had drivers uh, finishing their last in, uh, last orders at uh, 6 so they can get back to base by 7 and to get home within an hour. Um, well, about 6.30, uh, <laughs> it came out again saying that it was updated for 6 p.m. So everyone was already late <laughs> when they put this out. So it was a very, you know, kind hmm. of a cluster, hmm, you know, and and I understand that. Listen, I wouldn't want to have those, you know, those those calls at those times either. It was very uncertain times, especially dealing with COVID and not being able to touch anyone and 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 it wearing masks and everything like that. And having this also, I tell you, L.A. Um, and, and a lot of other cities really uh, was impacted by all of this. And and we're right in the middle of it, man, you know, so yeah. So, uh, yeah. And, and, and actually, you know, not even having to board our, our doors because we're, we're not a brick and mortar. We're out there. So I have to worry about detours because of protests. Um, you know, the logistics of, of navigating through this was it was a huge challenge. I'm not going to call it a nightmare because, you know, everything everything we can work on, we can work around. There's always a way. Um, but it was for lack of better words. Yeah, it was it was pretty it was pretty crazy. Uh, but we got through it. We got through it together mm-hmm. as a unit. Uh, as a company, we all got through it. I just had to, you know, and, and I, I gave all my employees hazard pay. Um, uh, actually, from the day that started all the way through uh, the second quarter. Um, so now wow. we're in the fourth. So I, I, I extended that even longer than most companies did. Even most, you know, forget cannabis, but any other company was stopping yeah. uh, hazard pay in mid 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 summer. And I said, no, we're just going to let that go until the end of the quarter. And at least let them, my employees know that this is going to happen, so they can adjust accordingly. Um, wow. You know, and we, we've all been in these at these levels before, looking to leadership to 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 not I'm not not saying save us, but give us the proper communication so we can make our own adult decisions for yourself and your family. Um, that is something that never left me from the Marine Corps. I'm a, I'm a poster child Marine. You know, I'm like I said, <laughs> I'm squeaky clean. I had never gotten writ- written up or anything. I just I just gravitated towards everything about it. And it's, it, that's what's really catapulted me and kept me above and, you know, above my peers uh, throughout, throughout my, my existence here. So that's how we did it. That's how we change it for, uh, for COVID. And, and honestly, you know, it's, it's, it's worked out so well to where we've taken, we've been ultra conservative with how we approach people. Um, we have contactless delivery. For our for our consumers, we uh, accept credit and debit through via uh, via an app. Um, all legit, obviously. <laughs> so this is what how people can actually, you know, pay for their cannabis, especially during COVID when people were getting furloughed. People are actually starting to charge uh, for their cannabis, and I can tell you, for me personally, COVID or no COVID, if I have the opportunity to charge something, I have a very good rewards card. I'm going to do that. <laughs> so, <you Yeah>. know, <laughs> and uh, and. You know, this is so it was something to where, you know, people really respected and it, it actually, again, it, it validates us more as one of the staples and benchmarks in this in this in this industry. Um, but also we, we actually brought a lot of uh, joy and laughter to to this uh, trying time with, um, you know, Debo uh, Tiny Lister is our uh, from the hit movie Friday. Uh, he's our spokesperson. So. I had this idea to um, to since since April was you know April was a the whole month was 420 because it's in the 2020 year. I had him deliver to a sweepstakes winner every Friday uh, a package from Pineapple Express. So somebody would enter to win on the website, and uh, they would no purchase necessary. They would just enter the win, and Devo would show up and um, and deliver their 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 uh their winnings and um and it was it was such a great time for people locked in their homes especially in april and we were really at the stay at home order um we couldn't go anywhere especially in la uh this was great for people it it allowed them to have a little bit of joy a little bit of break a a visitor at their home and a celebrity guest no doubt and um we actually got the uh the the eye in the ear of tmz 
and they did a <laughs> piece on us, uh, put us on TV and on the internet. That was nice. Uh, and they, they followed up with us in the same month. And that's typically never done. Um, along with that, though, we did with Power 106 and K-Day, the two largest um, you know, um, radio stations in the, in, the, in the state here, especially in L.A., uh, they allowed us to do a PSA, which is kind of unprecedented. There's not been a cannabis delivery service on the radio in L.A. history, in California history, actually. Wow. We're still getting numbers on oh. the rest of the country. Yeah, that's um, really fascinating. What was the what was the PSA sort of communicating? It was, it was about the stay at home order. You know, I had Debo do an intro, and then we just basically uh, we sponsored a a public service announcement for people staying at home and letting them know what's open and not open, and giving them a little more information, um, you know, about it. And that ran for five weeks, and I think that was about five times a day on both on both stations. Um, That's really fascinating. I think you guys as a corporation have a real knack for finding a way to just be part of a conversation. Um, And and I think that's just a key example of, uh, wow, I I didn't know about that. It's just, uh, that's very interesting, historic and interesting. It's we like to do that, right? We like to. Do, <laughs> I, I like I like uh, I like being first, obviously. Um, and but so does my team. You know, um, I think you've met Josh, and he's uh, my COO. He's mm-hmm. a he's a Wharton graduate. Um, he was he was actually uh, you know the brains behind our on demand delivery service, where we can actually get to anyone in LA in under two hours in most cases with free delivery. And again, we take you know, um, contactless, uh, we, we, you know, we, we take other cash options other than cash rather. Um, yeah. And in LA, that's no small feat, right? Oh no, 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 no. Yeah, Two hours. Logistically, that sounds like a nightmare. Absolutely. And, and, but, you know, like I said, we, we have, we have some of the best and brightest in this business and, you know, my team is, uh, is very, my, especially my executive team on down to the management team. Uh, they're very in tune and they, you know, we, we have this, we, when we hire for cannabis, especially, we're very, very picky. Um, you know, at the management level, at least you got to have a bachelor's, uh, you know, because mm. you got to know a little bit about business and you just can't jump into cannabis um, because it's it's cool and fun. Yes, it is. But it is actually a, a, a business and it rolls up to a public entity. So we have to do all these things uh, on the up and up. And, and you know, to a degree, we're conservative uh, to an extent, um, just simply because I... I want to, again, make this a bona fide uh, staple and a benchmark for any company looking to do things the right way. Um, so we are doing that stuff. And we, we, we have a lot of great creative minds, uh, not only that are you know, astute and have a lot of degrees between all of us and experience, but we are very creative at the same time. And we're all, we all come from an entrepreneurial mindset. So that gives us that crazy creativity to say, hey, um, you know, we know the law. What, what if we can do this? What if we can do this? And I can get a, a celebrity following here to, to help us, you know, promote and, and promote this, you know, social distancing events and things like that, which I'm sure we can get into a little bit later. Um, because we came out with a pineapple pop-up events where we, now we just, yeah. we're going over everywhere, spreading love to everybody. Um, yeah. Like and those are like drive-in, events. drive-in movie style events and stuff like that. Is that right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And more, and more than that. And more than that. <laughs> You know, but, but again, with the, you know, from the corporate standpoint, um, we're just trying to, you know, hit it all, all all angles. None of us sleep. We talk, we (laughs) we talk at, you know, we're texting each other at three, four in the morning. Um, and, but it has to be that way. It has to be that way because, um, we're still growing and this is still an emerging industry. So we, we don't take our foot off the gas here. You know, I tell people, um, you know, I don't have a dog or a goldfish or anything. So I'm in the office till eight o'clock you know, just getting things done and, and, and trying to foreshadow about things that are to come. Um, that's why it's important to stay up on this, you know, on this industry. And, and again, we, I facilitated a corporate merger just coming on with our private company. Uh, and, and in doing so that brought along a lot of, um, you know, a lot of other assets to, to the table. So, and which we can actually save and, you know, produce later. So I think, uh, we're, we're, we're expanding rapidly on all fronts. Any, Anywhere we can get in, we're going to fit in. Let's talk about another first. Uh, you mentioned that you are, have plans to expand to one of your 
um, one of your many homes, which is Puerto Rico. And that, that's another place that's been through t- some serious, just serious yeah. uh, impact, you know, I, I, yeah. on every level. Like, um, t- what does that look like? And, and what's the plan? Um, well, you know, they had, uh, you know, so it's medical, medical cannabis in, in Puerto Rico. Um, mm-hmm. They just opened up uh, licensing to deliver last year. Um, so I teamed up with a partner there who is one of the major players on the island. And we were looking to do an expansion and have Pineapple Express basically be the delivery arm for their dispensaries. Um, now, that has since got held up by the earthquakes and earlier in the year. And then obviously by COVID um, and, you know, there's still structural um, damage from the earthquakes to which, Mm. again, you know, Puerto Rico has been hit by so much and also has no love from our, at least our current administration. That's for sure. I hate, I don't, sorry to be political here, but that's just the truth. Well, it's just truth. Yeah, um, yeah, it is. And um, so I saw this as a great opportunity. Um, and again, you know, it's, it's near and dear to my heart. I, you know, all of my family on my father's side is still there. And, um, and this will bring not only outside money um, to a country, to an island that desperately needs it, um, but also creates jobs uh, to, hmm. a, to a, an island that desperately needs it. And, um, you know, we're looking at, you know, being able to uh, produce, you know, upwards of at least 20 new jobs to start. Um, with all the different facets that we're going to have in place. So, you know, but that has been since put on hold because the primaries, there's an election year. So, uh, you know, they haven't really developed the delivery regulations yet. So we have actually shifted and pivoted for now to just open a dispensary or maybe two and get involved with cultivation there um, to help out. Um, we We can bring a lot of expertise to an emerging our new industry there pretty much. So we were actually um, poised to do that as well. So there's a lot of things that are going to be going on with, um, with Puerto Rico. It's going to be great. Um, I've actually um, recently just uh, signed to do business development. Uh, Snoop Dogg is manager, one of his managers. Uh, uh, yeah. Turkey. And um, he is, um, you know, he's going to help me and orchestrate putting together a launch party, which is also a relief party as well. And I have so many people that want to want to get involved with this. So many celebrities that love the island that want to be involved with this. Um, so I, I think it'll be very, very cool to, to do that and, and bring, you know, hey, pineapples here, but also here's a relief effort as well. We're going to donate the proceeds to help out with the, uh, you know, the infrastructure and rebuilding the infrastructure of PR. Um, Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of great things that we can do. And I just, you know, I think that, yeah, as a corporation, you're you're supposed to make money. Um, but I want to run this place as little as a corporation as possible. Um, you know, I have to deal with the regulations and everything like that, but this is, uh, you know, I believe you do, you leave with your heart, man. And, and honestly, it sounds corny or cliche, but I've, I've fought for this country and I fought for the people that don't care. And and that people that, you know, that don't Mm. adhere to these ideals that we do. And, and I care about everybody and I want to see even our extensions, which is uh, PR, uh, you know, uh, a part of that. And I think, um, you know, I think it's all about peace and love, honestly. And I think that, you know, whatever we can do, especially in my position, um, a little bit of power that I have and and assuming, um, you know, that, that comes with great responsibility. It's like a Superman conversation, but (laughs) <laughs> you know, with great responsibility, you know, but, it, but, it, but it's the truth. It's the very, it's, a, it's the truth. So um, along with spreading joy, we're doing our pineapple pop-ups events. And these are, these are amazing. Um, we, we do drive-in movies. We teamed up with, uh, um, it's, it's called uh, Outside Cinemas in downtown LA, right across from the uh, Staples Center and LA uh, Convention Center. There's a nice lot that has a huge screen, portable screen, and people can just show up and they can watch, you know, t- t- uh, movies in their car and we sponsor it. So obviously we deliver so people can order on the app from a food truck and the food truck will deliver their food to the car and they can order from wow. us. And we can we can deliver their cannabis legally to their to their car um, as if you would get to any concession, you know, more or less. And so we're doing that. We're also doing uh, we're going to be doing NFL tailgating parties. So we're going to be oh, having no other way. lots. Yeah, so we're gonna have other lots. We're gonna have teaming up with the uh, 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 the veteran veteran gentleman um, and partner. His name is uh, is Jason. So Jay Will, he has this you know JW experience where he's gonna be doing 
it's going to be a tour. Different lots across the city. People can pull up in a parking space and tailgate and watch on an LED movie truck. And um, they can watch the games. You know, so and, and, and for us, too, for Hollywood, we just did a party for Russell Peters last Saturday um, where they had food trucks. But also because of our model, we can have a pineapple truck there and people can actually just order cannabis like it's an ice cream truck. Same as you walk up to a food truck. So we do them par- private events as well for, you know, for Hollywood folks. And, you know, obviously these folks are not going to walk into a dispensary or anything like that. They're going to get it delivered um, discreetly. And, and that's typically uh, us you know, for these folks. So <laughs> there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's, there's, uh, also, um, last Friday, we actually, uh, Snoop did his first DJ, you know, he's a, he's a DJ as well as many other things. He's a uh, DJ Snoop Adelic, and he did his first DJ set, uh, social distancing outdoors, uh, since COVID started like last eight months. We wow. just did that on Friday, which we were the only people to get press coverage on. Um, and, and, and that's a big part of, you know, big Percy as well. He's bringing a lot of cachet and a lot of celebrity to, uh, to the brand. So there is no other cannabis company at, at, at the same time with everything that we're doing that has the celebrity following that we do. It just doesn't exist. Um, so we're actually, we're actually going to work with, uh, obviously I'm, again, I'm a veteran, so we're going to work with weed for warriors and, um, hmm. that's the largest, that's the largest organization for, uh, cannabis for, for veterans in the country. And I want to help build out the, uh, the other chapters uh, across the country. So we're working with those folks, too, to do giveaways and, and things like that. And Toys for Tots coming up uh, in December, which we also did last year. We did a lot of toy drives because I, I actually was uh, responsible for running that division for about a year in Connecticut and Rhode Island during uh, the massive deployments uh, when, when 9-11 first started. So, mm-hmm. um, so there's a lot of fronts that we want to do on a uh, – on a national level, also I'm, I, I want to partner up with, and I had a preliminary kind of a text conversation with a uh, um, believer name is Hope Williams. Um, I'm, I'm probably getting her name wrong, but she's a she's the youngest uh, black cannabis dispensary owner in the country. She's in Maryland. Mm. Uh, Hope Wiseman, sorry, Hope Wiseman. Mm. So I just a lot of I want to do a lot of synergies with her as well uh, because you know I'm a young person in my position uh, for sure, and so is she. Um, and also with the mayor of Compton, uh, she's the youngest mayor, uh, in their history. And I think, I believe the first female and she's, she's African-American as well. Um, so there's a lot of synergies there. I'm, I'm fielding out with a lot of folks, especially with me, uh, being added to the Benzinga National Cannabis Advisory Council, along with John Sally, who I've worked with before as well. And we're going to start working together again. Now that gives me an outlet to put thought pieces and thought leadership, uh, out there for the way I see, you know, this industry is going and, and things like that. So, um, so I think at, with, with pineapple, we are, you know, it starts at the top and we are all accountable. We're all very smart. We're all very, uh, engaged and, and we're all trying different, whatever different things that we can do to thrive the company, but also keeping our people, our employees, our consumers safe. Uh, but also giving a return on, on investments for our, our stakeholders. And that includes direct investors and shareholders. Hmm. So one last question for you, Sean, uh, that is so many exciting things. And, and if I may, just really smart, not only in terms of creating experiences for consumers and people, um, giving access, but also in terms of the relationships that you're building, whether we're talking about building jobs and opportunities in Puerto Rico or, uh, you know, getting information and contacts, uh, through, you know, Hollywood, it's, Seriously exciting stuff that I could ask you about for hours, but um, let me just focus this back to you. Uh, what is the general future for Sean? Is is it Pineapple Express for the next few years? Do you think about the future in a world where the future seems like it's constantly changing? Um, where do you see yourself? You know, maybe five, ten years down the line. Man, you put me on the spot, so I'm gonna have to. <laughs> I'm gonna have to just put it out there. Then, I mean, you asked me a question, I, I got to answer, and I got to answer it. <laughs> Marines don't lie. All right. So, <laughs> uh, we're like Superman, you know, you can't tell a lie. Um, so, well, first of all, it's all pineapple. I, you know, honestly, I, I, you know, I, um, I, I, I like, I love Miami and Puerto Rico. Don't get me wrong. Um, LA is something of a place where, you know, this is, this is, uh, the next chapter in my life <clears throat> because this is where, this is the biggest market in the, in the world for cannabis. And, 
I really grabbed this by the reins and I, I am seeking to uh, ensure that pineapple is successful. Um, again, one thing in my studies and, 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 and that in my teachings also uh, that I've taught is, you know, at certain times, um, it's just reality. Sometimes companies outgrow their, their execs. And um, I don't see that happening hmm. uh, with us. We have so much more upside to do and there's so many things that we have to do. I don't see me going anywhere, uh, but that's not up to me, right? That's up to the board. So, <laughs> um, but I'm just going to, you know, my, my motto is I'm always going to leave with my heart and I'm going to do my best and forget the rest. And, um, one thing about me is I'm consistent. So I have extremely, you know, tact and bearing and that's from, uh, you know, it's tough. It's tough sending people towards the sound of gunfire that are, that are 17 and 18 years old, uh, to convince mm. those guys to do it when you're only about 19 and 20 yourself, you know, <laughs> I mm. saw, you know, and, and, that's to me that's my benchmark you know nothing out in the civilian life is going to ever get me to that point so i'm i've been told i'm very relaxed for a ceo in a publicly traded corporation um i've been told that i'm very easy to get along with and talk to and i'm always consistent in my demeanor and my you know and and, and how i am um for the future of me personally like i said i i'm a man of service i honestly am i i i realize that as soon as I put my, my feet on those yellow footprints in boot camp, where I didn't have an issue even in boot camp, I used to get in trouble for not getting in trouble. Um, hmm. I, I have this overbearing sense of, of, of uh, sense of duty. So I, I'm a service to this company. And uh, later down the road, uh, I don't, you know, I don't see me going, you know, uh, to another, you know, anywhere else. Um, you know, my, my Instagram is CEO of cannabis, if you can believe it. Uh, I, I don't know how that was available, but I got it. Uh, so I see myself in the cannabis space. I, I see myself uh, building pineapple along with my executives. Um, I can't do this by myself and I need everybody uh, galvanized uh, and, and, and to make this thing great. But at the end of the day, if you're going to ask me straight up, I, I, um, I do have political aspirations at the highest order. Let me just put it that way. Um, hmm. Cradle 2028. Uh, uh, that's that's incredibly exciting. Did I, I think, did I lose <laughs> you at like a key moment in this? But, um, but no, I, I believe it. it. I've worked with some folks. I've worked oh. with some folks so far. Um, I've worked with um, some some uh, mentors in that field that want to do this. Uh, I'm working on a book right now that should be out by my 40th. And um, But what I've been told is that my passion um, – supersedes a lot of a lot of former presidents uh, no other presidents had the the education that i've had and, and no other president has uh i don't know if we've ever had a marine corps veteran that's uh let alone a lot of uh military experience uh hmm. in in that office it's tough to send people to battle when you've never done it yourself um so and i'm squeaky clean man there'll be no 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 Stormy Daniels coming out of the woodworks. Uh, <laughs> no, nothing. I, 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 that's one thing for sure. It's tough enough for executives to sleep at night, especially in this seat. But one thing I do know for sure, there's no one out there in this world that's going to say, uh, Sean's this, that, and the other. No, it's, it's the opposite. And I, I relish in that. I do take pride in how I treat people and how um, what I put out in this world, I, I believe you get back. I'm a big believer in karma and all that good stuff. So I do think I can make a difference. Um, I do think that, um, you know, again, um, I, I know what it's like to, to struggle. I know what it's like to and have a single mom as well. So I, I have crazy affinity for, um, you know, for women in general, but especially single moms. I, it's just I don't know how my mom did all those things, especially without technology uh, back in the days. So with that, with the veteran, um, you know, with being a veteran, being a Marine Corps veteran, serving during a campaign, having four master's degrees, being traveled all over the world, um, being mixed as well. Uh, I'm a product of the future. You know, I am a hybrid and uh, and I get along with everybody, you know, so I didn't I don't really see, and I have a passion for it. I would give my life for it. So I don't see why I wouldn't take a stab at it as long as I have the proper direction and mentorship. You know, I cannot do it by myself. So. Um, if that's my, if that's where it leads me, that's where it leads me. But one thing's for sure. And another reason why I've been ahead of my peers on my life is I don't wait. I feel something. I go with my gut period. I don't worry about what I think. I worry about what I feel. Um, because I think that people don't trust themselves. How many times you hear people say that I want to do this, but I don't think I should. 
So the, the, the want is your gut. That's the, that's the real raw thing. But thinking that could be have so many different variables in, in how you formulate an, uh, you know, a, a, an actual uh, opinion or an idea or an action. Because that could be where you grew up, that could be your religion, that could be your mom says or whatever, your culture. But what you feel is what you feel. That's it. <laughs> you know? hmm. So I've always gone with that. And honestly, it's never served me wrong. Um, so that's all you can do, man. And I, I, that's where I see it. But for, the, for right now, um, I, I live, breathe, dream, just pineapples. <laughs> and I'm in, the, I'm, in the, I'm in the matrix, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, so one last question, uh, and feel free to shut it down if you, if you got to. But, um, you know, ha- has this progressed to as far as having an idea of, like, what political party you might be interested in being affiliated with? Um, would this be like, yeah, what form might that look like if and when politics becomes part of your life? You know, I don't know. Um, I, I'm not someone, see, again, I'm a Marine, so everything is not Mm. so black and white. I've been in situations where you've been taught something or trained to do something specifically that equals this, but it's not the case. You have to adapt a lot. So there are a lot of things, and I don't, I don't agree with the whole structure, honestly. Um, you know, there's some things that sure. I'm conservative about. There's some things that I'm liberal about. And there's some things that I'm in the middle about. It's the same way as, uh, you know, I, I would say I'm an ambivert, which is a, lot of, a new term for a lot of people. I'm not really, I'm in the middle. I'm not necessarily an introvert. I'm not necessarily an extrovert. I'm right in the middle as an ambivert. And only because the extrovert part is my job. <laughs> I, I have to do this. And people that actually know me know I'd rather be in a cave somewhere. Um, and that's just, <laughs> that's just, that's just the honest thing. Even though I've been an actor and model and I've worked with a lot of great people and I was a realtor, I did real estate and all these different things. And I was a trainer for, I was a personal, uh, I was a master trainer for, um, certain people becoming certified trainers and all these things that people facing I'm the, um, I recharge my batteries by myself and, and, and at home. Um, which again, I think that the presidency is a pretty lonely position to where I kind of gravitate towards. And also being CEO is as well. I mean, if you think about it, listen, the structure is the same, right? Um, you know, being a president of the United States is, is literally being the CEO at the highest order. Um, you know, you have your, your board, which is your, um, I mean, I'm sorry, you have your, your executive team, which is your cabinet. These are your closest advisors and you have your, your board, which is a uh, Congress, basically. And then you have your shareholders, which is the American people, Um, you know, and and either of these people can get you out or get you in. So it's really, I see it as that. And I I see it as, um, you know, just the hardest CEO position you can imagine. Um, But I think that, um, you know, somebody has to do it. And I, I think that if anyone has showed us that anyone can be, it's, it's what's going on now. Um, and and no, no, make no mistake. I hope the guy gets better. That's that's uh, you know, that's that's something that I know a lot of people are joking around about and stuff like that. But the guy's still a human being. So, uh, and I shed blood for him too. You know, so um, so I, I do hope he gets better. But yes, I do. Um, yeah, I may be coming at you. So, <laughs> and you know what? If I if I if but I, again, nothing's going to steer me away from that. If I if I feel like it's something I want to do. Um, I'm going to go for it and I'm going to go hard. You know, um, you know, I have to, I have to give everything. The first time I, I picked up a golf club, the next day I bought a whole new set, gloves, shirt, everything. You know, I want to make sure whatever I'm doing, I'm doing it to the best of my ability. I have all the necessary tools to do that. Uh, so that's where it's heading. And I think that, um, there's nothing for me, like I said, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a lifetime server, whether I'm serving a company or serving my country. Um, that's my passion. And that's what that's what it's at. Sean Cradle is the CEO of Cannabis, but also the CEO of Pineapple Inc. Uh, Sean, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Thank you, man. You can find more cannabis industry reporting at trichomes.com, as well as more great shows like this one. If you're a member of the cannabis community and you have a story you want to share with us, reach out. You can reach the show at highground at trichomes.com. Please take a second to subscribe to the podcast and write a review. It really helps others find the show. You can also join the discussion with industry insiders and get your voice heard by joining the community at trichomes.com and following us on all social media. The show is produced by David Fortin. 
I'm Jesse Batend, and thank you for listening. <laughs>